don't think I feel excited. I think I feel mostly nervous. Hey everyone, happy new year and welcome back to my channel. So it is officially 2020. <laughs> Um, I hope you guys all had a really good holiday, and I am ready to just tackle 2020 head on. So I was away from YouTube for like two weeks, um, just for like for the holidays and whatnot. Um, our IVF process has begun, so <laughs> so it actually all started the day after Christmas. So Merry Christmas to me! Time for shots. Um, so that was fun, <laughs> but we got started with um, Lupron, which is a hormone slash estrogen suppressant injection, um, and we kind of kicked that off. So for those of you that are maybe new to the IVF process or don't really um, understand it, that's totally okay. It's like a whole other language and a whole other world. And my hopes with this transfer not only is to share it with you guys, but maybe to educate a little bit. Um, I think there's just a lot of misconceptions around IVF, a lot of just unawareness, which if it's not your world, why, why, why would you bother to know? Unless it's something you're generally interested in, or maybe you have a friend or a loved one or something, somebody going through it, and you just want to, you just want to know, you just want to understand. So, and I will say that most protocols at most clinics are very different. So if you're noticing that my protocol seems a little extreme, you're not wrong. <laughs> Um, it is a lot and I wanted to just walk you through where, where we've been and where we are now and <clears throat> where we're going. <laughs> so like I said, we did start um, some Lupron injections on December 26th. So it might sound a little backwards to do some hormone suppressing. Um, and you're right, it does sound a little bit backwards. Um, but the reason we do that is so we can 100% manipulate the system within my reproductive organs. So. Things with frozen transfers are pretty different than fresh transfers if you're familiar with that process. But if you think about it, with a frozen transfer, um, the ovaries are completely taken out of the equation. The, the, the ovaries are not secreting any hormones, no progesterone to help um, become pregnant, to sustain a pregnancy, um, things like that. So we really have to manipulate estrogen and progesterone to make it all work, to support any potential pregnancy that may come about. So that's what we've been doing. Um, I did, I've been doing Lupron for a while now. <laughs> it feels like a while. Um, and as of yesterday, um, we started incorporating estrogen. So the way we do that is we decrease the amount of Lupron. So we were doing 10 units a day, now we're down to five units a day, which is like the tiniest amount. Um, but you still gotta prick yourself in the tummy, so. Um, yeah, we're doing Lupron and we've incorporated some estradiol pills, which is a pill form of estrogen, um, which we're just taking in the morning right now. Later on in the cycle, we will incorporate morning and night. Um, we're doing some estrogen patches, which um, they're the, a transdermal way to get estrogen into the blood system. Um, so it's just kind of twofold. So we're keeping estrogen at bay, but we're also increasing it unnaturally, if that makes sense. So that's where we're at right now. Yesterday I had my baseline sonogram, which for most transfers for people, they'll start um, with a baseline. So um, we did that yesterday, everything looked good. You want the lighting of like the uterus to be super duper thin. So when we start incorporating all that estrogen, it starts to fluff it up, which makes it, you know, a perfect home for an embryo. So that's where we're at now. We had started incorporating estrogen yesterday, so um, put on my little patch, took my estrogen pill. Um, I'm also on a couple other medications, um, dexamethasone. I know a lot of other people take um, prednisone or medrol, which are um, steroids. And uh, steroids, for my case, are to suppress any inflammation in the body. Um, I'm a big walking ball of inflammation, so um, taking dexamethasone, which has its own kind of side effects. Um, my face tends to get a little bit more puffy on steroids. I think that's pretty normal for a lot of people. Um, I know on Phil and Alex's channel, she struggled with a lot of bloating and um, water retention. It just happens when you're on a steroid, so looking really cute. <laughs> um, and then obviously I'm also on baby aspirin, which is a blood thinner. So 
with this new protocol compared to my last frozen transfer, um, we are doubling up the blood thinners. So I'm on a daily baby aspirin, which is the same as last time. But come transfer day, we'll be incorporating another intense blood thinner, which is a subcutaneous injection, aka the tummy or the thighs. And um, that will, that's called Lovenox, or Lovenox, whatever you want to call it, Anoxaparin. It's just an injectable blood thinner that um, I will take every single day if I'm pregnant to almost the end of the pregnancy, and then you switch to heparin. It's a caution they take for bleeding out while well, during giving birth. It's really fun. It's really scary. Um, but yeah, I hope this makes sense. But regardless, I just wanted to talk about a little bit how I'm feeling with everything. Um, and yeah, just give you guys like a little update. I've been feeling a little, a lot different this time versus last time. And if you're new here, we did a transfer last July. Um, we did get pregnant from it. We transferred two embryos, one little baby stuck, um, my little baby girl, Brecklin, and uh, we miscarried her at 11 weeks. So we're really hoping with this new protocol, with the um, more extreme blood thinners that um, we can keep that issue at bay. Brecklin was a genetically normal baby, um, so we do know that it's something within my body that's the issue. Um, I've been tested for some basic blood clotting disorders such as factor V Leiden, um, MTHFR. Uh, I don't have either of those, so um, those aren't the conditions that I have. There are some other blood clotting issues um, that I may have that um, maybe aren't detectable or the test is really expensive. Um, one was like antiphospholipid syndrome, syndrome, there's a couple others. Basically, my doctor and I kind of came to the conclusion that we could spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to maybe weed out which one it is, um, but he feels really confident that um, it is a blood clotting issue. Um, so he said regardless if you take these tests or not, Lovenox is his next step for me. So. Um, kind of <laughs> going at this on his word, which is a little hard, but um, also he said we're, we're, no, we're not running out of options. I hate to even say that because that's not, that's not true. There are more options that we can do, um, but we're getting to the point where my protocols are pretty extreme um, with progesterone and oil and the Lovenox and uh, Prometrium and Estradiol and Estrace and patches and it's just a lot and um, we don't want to do more to my body than we have to to make this happen. So we're, we're, we're drawing a fine line of um, what to do. That's where we're at. I'm feeling nervous about it. A little, I can't even say I feel excited. I think I don't feel like, I don't think I feel excited. I think I feel mostly nervous. I was actually talking to a friend the other day about the differences between this transfer versus the first and it, it makes me think of that commercial I don't know if you guys have seen it I'm pretty sure it's a diaper commercial and it's like first kid second kid and like first kid you're like high strung you're nervous like Germex on all the things and then second kid like they're crawling on the floor and like spilled cereal like it's just very like meh, whatever you like you care like you're you've toned it down on like your high strongness and I think that's how I feel with this transfer like and just my approach to it, like, I, my very first transfer, I set up, like, this, like, shot station in my kitchen, and it was, like, really intense, <laughs> like, probably not necessary, and I put, like, a lot of pressure on myself to, like, make everything go smoothly. This time around is, like, a little bit different, like, I didn't set up my shot station until after, like, four or five days after I'd already started shots, I was like, I need to, like, put these drawers somewhere. I bought these little gray drawers, and I was like, okay, I'll just set up my bedroom and just, like, set everything in there, and... Um, yeah, it's just a different feeling going into this. Um, I think last time I was ridiculously optimistic, which for good reason. I mean, mind over matter is something I really believe in and having a good mindset is important, but also I'm very realistic in this journey and, um, I know the outcomes <laughs> that could happen. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to get emotional. It's just scary to put yourself, to voluntarily put yourself in the line of another loss or a failed transfer. Um, it's scary, so. So that's pretty much what's been going on. Um, 
things feel like they're happening pretty quick, which I'm not mad about. <laughs> Thanks for Day um, is tentatively coming up in just a couple weeks. Um, it's near the end of January, so yeah. Only focusing on that right now. Um, my husband and I have like barely scratched the surface on the conversation of what do we do if um, A, this fails, or B, it results in a fourth loss. Um, we have not crossed that bridge yet. Yeah, so we don't know quite exactly what our next steps could or would be. Um, if this doesn't pan out, please feel free to not give your suggestions. <laughs> that would be great. Um, obviously, this is our path to parenthood and something we have to figure out for ourselves. Sometimes I feel like people think they can say or suggest whatever they want um, because we're on the internet. And I know that's going to happen for the rest of forever, but maybe just think if you wouldn't say it to my face, maybe don't write it down. Just, just about. I have um, a lining, a uterine lining check on the 13th of January. So we'll go in and do an internal ultrasound again. I honestly would love to count how many of those I've had. I'm going to say over 200, maybe more. So that's fun. I'm documenting it day by day um, over on my Instagram account. So um, follow me there if you're interested. I'm just looking forward to what 2020 has to offer. This could be the year we finally get our baby, our take home in our arms baby. That's really exciting to think about. But I also gotta, you know, remain realistic about it. I'm like, well, eh, maybe. So that's it. Okay, let me know um, what questions you guys have. Maybe I can address it in a future video or I can just answer you down in the comments. I love hanging out, chatting with you guys in the comments. Um, and that's it. So I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned. And if you're not, I know I say this in a lot of videos to subscribe, um, but please do subscribe. Um, it costs nothing to you. You just click the red button that says subscribe um, and it helps my channel out a lot. It's, it's a two second task for you and a very impactful result for me. So if you can subscribe, it would mean so much. If you like this video, a thumbs up is like the next step to being an amazing viewer and I just appreciate it a lot. Heck, you can give it a thumbs down. I don't even care. Engagement is engagement on YouTube, so interacting with my videos, commenting, liking, disliking, subscribing, it's all helpful and I could, can't tell you how much I appreciate it, so please do that. Um, if you're interested in any of my Grow Through What You Go Through merchandise, it's always linked in the description. Um, that also helps us out so, so much, so thank you to all of you that have ever purchased one of those items. If you would like to, check it out. Um, and that's it. So happy 2020. Let's do the dang thing. All right. Bye guys.